Hey. I think at this point we're all pretty familiar with, you know, adding the standard plate and hall sounds to our beats or our songs, but I want to take a look at some more creative things that we can do with reverb and how we can make our beats more interesting in the process. Let's do it. Number one, early reflections. These are the very first sort of delayed versions of the sound that you hear in a room before the smooth tail that we've all come to know and love actually activates and is part of the sound. So you can use these to add a little bit of dimension to sounds that are that are in your beats that need just a little bit of love. A lot of the time when we're making music, the sounds that we start with are dry and they're just sort of <laughs> begging to be put in some kind of space. But you don't like want to crowd the center of the mix too much. You want it to sound too muddy uh, with too much reverb going on. So one strategy that we can use is to use only the early reflections on these sounds to add, you know, some dimension. So if I pull open any snare, and we pull open something like our verb, just a basic reverb, these little lines here are the early reflections that we want to use. So I'm going to pull this reverb tail all the way off. I'm going to turn up the early reflections to zero, and I want you to listen to what this sounds like on its own, just with the snare drum. If we make it just a smaller room, the early reflections get tighter together and the tail gets shorter. And now, when we add it together, So it just adds like this little bit of character to it without, you know, making it sound too washy. Sometimes I like to do this with um, vocals. So if I, if I just pull up in a vocal here, without making it sound, you know, like this, I know you're we can be a little bit more subtle with it and add just these early reflections. Same thing that we did with the snare. Telling me you're leaving, but all I wanna do is hold you now and hear the sound of your heart beating. So there's lots of cool ways you can get creative with it. Another tip I have for you too is they say that you should never put reverb on a bass, but we're gonna break the rules a little bit here because I wanna show you how cool this sounds. Um, I just found like this random bass loop on my computer and watch what happens when I slide up the wet dry balance on our early reflections with just a bass, okay? Obviously you want to be subtle with this, but it, it adds like a really cool ambience to the bass. Try that out and then watch everybody get upset with you for using reverb on a bass. <laughs> Number two, making reverse textures. This is one of my absolute favorite techniques. I use this all the time. And essentially what it is, is you take a sound and then you reverse it. You send it to some reverb and then you record the reverb and then reverse the recorded reverb and place it before whatever element it is that you are applying this technique to. So to make that a little bit more clear, I've got a drum loop pulled up here and I'm gonna show you what this sounds like. So I'm gonna take this first piece of the drum loop, it's pretty much just the kick, and I'm going to create a new track, and let's move it here. I'm going to press R to reverse it in Ableton. Okay, and then I'm going to send it to some reverb. So let's, let's use our verb again, just to keep it simple. Okay, so I put it at 100% wet and I've reversed the first part of the drum loop. Then I'm going to freeze this track and I'm going to flatten it, which is essentially bouncing it in place. Then here's the crucial part. We're going to reverse our bounce in placed audio, place it just before our drum loop and it gets you this sound. But this works great with a lot of stuff. My other favorite way to use it is probably vocals. Hey. I like to use this in transitions and intros and all kinds of ways. So get creative with uh, where you put these in your songs and it really adds like a nice tension building texture to whatever it is that you're working on. I love using it. Number three, room verbs. We all know the standard reverb types that everyone likes to use, like, you know, your plates or your halls or your chambers. But I think a lot of people forget about room verbs and they're not used as much as I think they should be because they're so cool. I think they work really nicely on vocals or drum sounds, but unfortunately not basses this time in my humble opinion. See, we are working with this vocal here. Now, once we activate this room reverb, I want you to check out what this sounds like. You can even go shorter too, make it almost sound more like the early reflections only. 
I also really love putting it on uh, snares too. Check this out. Even just adding like a little hint of it is nice. I'm on like 7% and it already sounds quite a bit different. Number four, shimmer verb. My next trick for you to try out involves raising the pitch of your input by an octave or sometimes two, and then sending that to reverb and combining it with the original signal. There are some dedicated plugins for this, but you don't actually need a dedicated plugin. You can just create it yourself. Let's just uh, lay down some chords real quick. So if I just commit this to audio, duplicate our flattened track, and I'm going to raise, I'm gonna change this to complex mode, and then I'm gonna raise the pitch by an octave. Right, and then we're gonna get our trusty arbor about, and I'm going to actually use a plate this time just to sort of change it up and keep the time pretty long, and you really wanna keep this on 100% wet for this technique. And then I'm actually gonna get rid of the damping and any EQ that's already on the reverb plugin because I want it to sound a bit brighter. It's supposed to be a shimmer verb after all. So check out how this sounds now. And then once we combine it with our original signal, if we use a drum loop instead, it also sounds pretty cool, so. And we can even raise this by another octave as well. Sometimes when you're working with reverb in a conventional way, it doesn't always play nicely in your mix because of the key that you're in or you know the octave that you're playing in or whatever it might be. So if you do it this way, it's kind of a nice way to add a little bit of depth without making things too muddy to be actually usable. Number five, last but not least, convolution reverb. I think a lot of people sleep on convolution reverbs. They sound so good and they're so versatile. And if you don't have a convolution reverb, don't worry, there's a lot of free plugins out there that are great that will do this for you. But I'm just gonna use the Max 4 live device called Convolution Reverb Pro. And essentially what Convolution Reverb does is it takes these impulse responses, which are just recordings of different various spaces, and then they will simulate what your sound will sound like in that space using the impulse response. So here's just a little drum loop. And the cool part is you can choose all kinds of different spaces that are real. So if we choose, you know, like St. Andrew's Church, Now our drum loop is in St. Andrews. But where it gets really interesting is where you start using impulse responses that are more experimental, let's say. So if we go to the, what do you know, the experimental category, we can choose all these different things. Like for example, there's a chord. <laughs> Look at that, I just made a song literally with <laughs> this impulse response. You can actually download impulse responses that people have recorded on their own in various spaces. You know, even things like tubes and pipes and all kinds of weird materials that you can send your input through and make some really interesting sounds. just all around really great if you're like looking for some inspiration or something new that you can just kind of lay over the top. Just like throw a drum loop into a chord or tone impulse response and boom, you got a new track. If you're looking for some ways to sort of spice up a more boring sound, try running it through some impulse responses, I'm serious. So what are your favorite creative ways to use reverb in your beats and your music? Let us know down in the comments below. And until next time, I'll see you later.